How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame and I am back with another Fantasy Premier League video. I'm just sitting here pitch side at Old Trafford and I'm just playing with you. Obviously I'm not at Old Trafford, we just have obviously the background, but eventually I'm going to have a green screen to basically put myself in different stadiums, which is going to be quite cool. So make sure to leave a like just for that. It should be arriving sometime late next week, which means the following week I'll have it set up. But make sure also to follow us on Twitter, we're also going to be doing a live stream for when I actually change my team. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So today we're going to be looking at what my current team is, we're going to be looking at four different drafts that I've set up for us. Um, so let, let me just give you an overview of what chips I have. So basically, I have every chip available. I have my wild card, free hit, bench boost, and triple captaincy ready to play with the unlimited transfers set available for us. So if you look over to the team on my left, you can see that we have a lot of value tied up in a bunch of different players. Kevin De Bruyne, John Lundstrom, uh, Henderson and Dean Henderson in goal, Sadio Mane, Mo Salah, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Raul Jimenez, just to name a few. So we want to make sure we protect some of that value with some of the drafts that we've done, but also we've gone with the full, just get everyone out of there that I don't feel like keeping. So what needs changes in our team? We're looking at the Watford players, Southampton, Leicester, and Liverpool here, because those are the ones that don't necessarily have you know, the greatest fixtures, as well as Liverpool aren't going to have much to play for once they win the Premier League. Because if City, let's say, were to drop points versus Arsenal and, and maybe lose that game, and Liverpool beats Everton, they, they win the league. They only need two wins or a City loss and a win themselves in order to get themselves the title. And then they can basically play whoever they want to get the Premier League's winner's medals. So the players we're looking to change here is basically... Our Liverpool assets, so both from Liverpool and Everton, our Southampton players, our Watford players, and our Leicester players. Although we do have some value tied up in Trent Alexander-Arnold, Mo Salah, and Sadio Mane, it may be time to get rid of them because they're only going to be more valuable for one, maybe two more games tops. I do have one of these mock drafts with uh, a Liverpool asset still in it. However, I feel that that's the only one that you'll probably need because after that, Liverpool are just going to play probably the youngsters or basically anyone they want to get a Premier League medal. So the first team that we have here contains seven double game week players. This is the team that I was mentioning before where I was looking to save a little bit of value. We still have Mane in the team. He'll probably stay there for another week or two and then we'll potentially transfer him out with the wild card or even just direct transfers depending on how I want to play the chips. But it also has Man United assets in it. So it has a Man United defender, Juan Basaka, that could easily also be Harry Maguire, both of which are very good. Obviously, there have been reports that Juan Basaka has been practicing a little bit on his creativity. So maybe more productive... More So this is the first draft that we have here where we're trying to save a little bit of value. So we have Mane still in the team. He was 11.6 million when I bought him. He's now risen up to almost, I believe it's 12.5 million. We're trying to basically save his value for at least a game because we know he'll definitely play in the first game when they play against Everton. They'll want to win that game because of the derby. But also we have some different things going on here. We have double Wolves attack and Jota and Jimenez. Jimenez was already existing in my team with the Wolves triple up uh, with the addition of Jota who have both been on fire when they played together and I think Jota is definitely a better asset than Traore in this situation because Traore has been shown to have the shoulder injury which we're not sure if that's still fully healed and even though they did have a three-month break but it could still something that could be reoccurring over time and he may just be out of favor. We also have Manchester United assets with Juan Basaka, who's been practicing on his creativity. But you also could go for the safer option in Harry Maguire, who's more of a bonus magnet than Juan Basaka is. He tends to pick up a little bit more bonus just because of his clearances and being a center back. He's also a threat from set pieces too, so he does have his creative aspects there. And can make some deep lying plays from center back if he pushes on into the midfield. And we also have Martial as one of the cheaper i would say midfield options at a good price at eight million but we do have some risk in the team sane is quite risky at 9.3 million obviously hasn't played at all this season had an injury that basically stopped them from basically being able to play the entire season uh you know when you're looking at city assets there's a lot of rotation there if you just think of the midfielders that they could play you have mars you have sterling you have sane you have bernardo silva even kevin de Bruyne can play out wide you have gabriel gabriel jesus that can play out wide potentially zinchenko could be moved out to the left wing you could have even one of the fullbacks could be pushed up in a more advanced position and basically play that that role um, even times they've played uh, Aguero and, and Jesus splitting as strikers with Raheem Sterling as a false nine 
So as you can see, there's many different ways that the city can play out their team. So Sané is quite risky, however we do know if Bernardo Silva is playing, we could potentially downgrade it to him or even David Silva because they are in a similar price bracket. We can upgrade Martial to maybe Bruno Fernandes and we could potentially upgrade Cantwell to McGinn who's another double gaming player. Or if we wanted to keep Cantwell at the same price we can go with maybe like a Douglas Luiz who was favored in the midfield and was doing decently well for Aston Villa. Or we could even upgrade Lascelles, who's only a single gaming player, although he has good fixtures, to an Arsenal defender. So maybe the likes of Hector Bellerin or even Kieran Tierney, which I do have in another draft. So this team, I think, can be used for either of the two chips that we have available to us. My team isn't good enough to use the free hit, so I've kind of ruled that out. Uh, obviously, we can't use the wild card because we have a wild card obviously active at the moment with our unlimited transfers. So my only two options is bench boost and triple captain. This team can be used for either. It does have seven double gaming players. It's more balanced. I think it would favor more of the bench boost side of things because of the amount of starters that are playing in the team. The only kind of up in the air players will be Lundstrom whether he gets a start however he's playing two games so you expect him to be rotating in and out with Sanderberg and then obviously the rest of the players kind of speak for themselves and probably will start for their teams moving on to the second draft that I have here we have one that's a lot riskier it's got nine double game week players it has zero Aston Villa players so this is one if you think that Aston Villa just isn't worth bringing in they do have two tougher fixtures for themselves and Aston Villa are currently sitting in the relegation zone at the moment so if you feel their assets aren't really worth it and like most people who uh, have Sheffield United assets or are looking to bring Sheffield United assets in, one of those games is against Aston Villa. And you kind of don't want Jack, your Jack Grealish scoring and getting rid of your three clean sheets that you would otherwise have had. It's just not a, not a great situation there. So this is kind of one that alleviates that. However, there is more risk involved. It is very Man United and Arsenal heavy. We have three Arsenal players. We have three Manchester United players with the double midfielders for Manchester United. And the double defense for Arsenal. Now, obviously, it is quite risky because it means that we have to rely on Bernardo Silva playing from Man City in our Man City triple up. But it also means that we have to rely on somebody who's only scored five FPL points this season due to injury, and that's Kieran Tierney. However, Arsenal haven't had the ability to play with their proper back four, with Bellerin out on the one side and Tierney out on the other with their two center backs of their choosing. It's just a bit interesting. They may have been able to work on that in, in training. I'm not too sure from what I've seen in some of the footage. Not so much. But again, you can't take much from the scrimmages that the teams have been playing. Because they have obviously been swapping players in and out. And with the five substitution rule, who knows? There could be people being taken off at halftime, 30 minutes. There may be strategies revolved around it. Unlike the Bundesliga, though, you can only do three sets of subs. So you have five substitutions that you can make in total. However, you can only do it three times throughout a game. So if you have five substitutions, you can do a three, a one, and a one. You can do a two, a two, and a one. You can do five all in one go. But you can't do five individual one-man substitutions. It has to be three sets, and that's all that you're allowed. Whereas the Bundesliga, you're allowed to basically... It's the 85th minute. You've made no substitutions. You can do one sub every minute until the 90th minute if you want to. Um, like I said, it does have nine double game week players. It is a bit of a risk. It does favor more of the triple captain side of things, in my opinion. However, you could also easily use this with the bench boost as well, because you're going to get the likes of really good solid players in Pogba and Bruno Fernandes, who they're against Spurs, and they have good fixtures after the fact. And obviously with the triple captaincy, you can pick your pick of the litter with Kevin De Bruyne, Aguero, or Aubameyang. So I've come with a more balanced approach on the third draft here. We have eight double game week players. We have double Manchester United midfield and Martial and Pogba. We have no Wolves triple up, so we don't have Jota in the attack this time. But we still have the two existing assets in Willy Bali and Raul Jimenez up front for us. And Willy Bali obviously just being a really solid defender for his price point, which we've gotten a little bit of value over time of having him. We do have lots of enablers, however. We have Todd Cantwell. We have Jamal Lascelles, and we have Max Ahrens as our smaller midfield and defensive options. However, this team does rely heavily on the fact that if Leroy Sané is playing. Now, when City were at their best last and the season before, Sané and Sterling were the two wide men and were playing quite well. 
Sané also made Sterling's points go up as well when he was in the team. They just provided more width and they helped each other out a lot more. So there's arguments to say that if Sané is playing, you should just get Sterling anyway, who hasn't been in the greatest of form or hasn't reached the heights that he did uh, like last season. We still have the key the key players for Arsenal and Man City in there, obviously Leno and goal. We also have Aubameyang and Aguero in there, as well as Kevin De Bruyne. All obviously for the attacking side of things to be triple captained for Kevin De Bruyne, Aguero and Aubameyang specifically. I would probably lean more towards the Man City side as they're the stronger team. And then obviously you have the more solid midfield going later on into the season with the Manchester United assets already prepared for the very good fixtures coming up. However, it all stems from whether Leroy Sané is playing or even if Bernardo Silva or David Silva would be the option there. And then you could spread the funds elsewhere to potentially upgrade the likes of one of your defenders or midfielders to another double game week player, such as an Arsenal defender or an Aston Villa midfielder. So with this last draft, I've gone with basically maximizing the number of double game week players that you can have. I have the top city assets in terms of price point. I have triple Sheffield United defense. And I have Bruno Fernandes, who's been fantastic for Manchester United and is a good pick going forward. And from the looks of the whole team, you can see that they are all starters. The only real question marks is whether Lundstrom will see starting time and Roman size, whether he'll keep his position down the back when everyone's fully fit and available. But otherwise than that, it's a very solid team. There's a lot of players. This would be more of a bench boost style of team. You can easily triple captain it as well. But with the 10 double game week players, two of which are a goalkeeper, you field your eight outfield double game week players, your one goalkeeper, and then you have your um, your other goalkeeper on the bench as well. The only issue with this draft is that obviously Aston Villa do play against Sheffield United, which means that your assets of McGinn and Douglas in the first game that they play versus each other, you do kind of don't want them to score so basically they're going to come out of that game with two three points to, depending on you know what goes down in the actual game you just basically you're hoping for a no no and that would maximize the amount of points that you can get because you're favoring Sheffield United over your actual Aston Villa midfielders because you have more of those players and they all share the same common goal keeping the clean sheet and getting those bonus points so this team obviously would be more of a bench boost style of team, in my opinion. I think that you would want the the more double gaming players you have, the more you are leaning towards your bench boost versus your triple captain. If you know that you're not going to have a double game week player on the bench, you might as well go for the triple captaincy in that case if you have both of those chips available. Obviously, for me, my team is in as, in as good of a state to free hit, and obviously the wild card is effectively useless at the moment because we have a free wild card running. So with this style of team, I would say the bench boost is more favorable. But we'll have to see what I choose when I go to do the stream earlier next week, which will most likely be on Monday. So that's going to do it for today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed the video as well, and especially if you're new around here. Make sure to turn those notification bells on so you know when the videos come out. There's going to be a few of them going up for sure. Various different content going out on this channel, but a lot of FPL stuff's going to be coming out because we're getting back into it, and it's starting next week Wednesday, and we all can't wait for it. Make sure to also give us a follow over on Twitter as well. It shows when we're going to be doing the live stream. It also is going to be showing when videos go up on the channel as well. And just to show overall support, I tend to put out a few tweets now and then kind of explaining what's going to be going down on the channel as well. The live stream is going to be uh, on Monday. Uh, so today of the recording being the Friday before the week of FPL start. Monday being two days before the actual deadline and start of the Premier League. I'll probably do it somewhere around midday EST. So make sure to look out for that. And you can also give us a follow over on there as well because that's where we do our game week discussions a day or two before the game weeks start. So that's where I'll be doing my changes on stream. We're doing score predictions and all that sort of stuff that we normally do so make sure to go and check that out and until then it's pilot flame and i'll see you guys next time take care